Welcome back. You're watching The Contrarians. Well, this is our social media segment where we're going to keep the panel. We don't always do this, but we're going to keep the panel. And one by one, we've got right-wingers and left-wingers joining us to discuss the issues of the week. Indeed, the issues of the day. You can bet Wayne Swan and superannuation will feature prominently. We are joined on the far end of the panel. We've kept the rest of our panel here. We're joined by Osman Faruqi. Osman, welcome to the program. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me on. Now, your first sin is that you edit Tharunka, which is the University of New South Wales student newspaper. I went to New South. That's rubbish, isn't it? Well, look, it may have been in the past when you were around. <laughs> That's why I decided to edit. I think what kind of person this, yeah. disparages yeah, yeah. the previous editors? What a disgrace. Some, someone who knows them well enough to be able to pull that <laughs> off, I think, and still, still have beers with them later on. All right, let's get into the issues. Now, Dee's always sitting here defending Wayne Swan. You're a lefty. You must think he's doing a bang-up job. Yeah, so uh, actually it's one of those things where, um, Dee, even though you support that, I was watching the show earlier, I thought I might come on as backup for you, but in regards to Wayne Swan, I don't think he's necessarily the best guy we've ever had in the position of treasurer. Um, in particular, I think today's example on superannuation reforms, things relating to the he's mining squinted. tax. Yeah, exactly. So from my perspective, I am needed to tax the rich more. Yes, that's, that, that was my view. I think there was a big opportunity to reform super, to claw back some of those $32 billion a year in tax concessions that we give to the most wealthy. And, and, he did pe and people that are living off 100 grand a year in retirement, um, sometimes it might be a, a family income, if it's just the one person that's been accumulating super throughout their lives. Someone that lives, wants to live off $100,000 a year um, is wealthy. Well, what, what the changes that he announced are targeting 14,000 people only. So 14,000 of the most wealthy Australians. So, so, but the question was, so are they wealthy? Yeah, I think they are. I think the people who have accumulated $2 million in their superannuation accounts and are the 14,000 most wealthy Australians at the time of their retirement are people that it's worth looking at. You realise that like, well, you contribute to more. superannuation over long periods of time and actually starts to accumulate to large numbers that include millions for well, then some why people is it only without 14, being unreasonable. Why is it only 14,000 people? We are talking the top point Because the, the Liberal because Party the opposes top, increasing super, the, that's why. We're talking the top 0.4% no. here, guys. Yeah, it's it's going to be a lot more... Can I jump in and pause this? It's going to be a lot... I think you're going the same way. It's going to be a lot more people than that after people have had 40 years of their working lives accumulating super. The only reason it's low in terms of the overall total of people that have it now is because super hasn't been in for very long. And what, and what if people who have a $3 million house and no money in super? They're not fabulously wealthy and people who've got $2 million in super and no house are? I don't get it. But it's only 15%. This is the other side of it. It's a bit hard to think that there's a problem with someone that's got $10 million that they've squirrelled away into super through the various opportunities to put large amounts into it uh, that have been there in recent years, getting taxed on their $1 million earning, let's say, per year, 15%. I mean, that, I, I, it's surprising, I think, to a lot of people that at the moment, until this change, there is no tax whatsoever on the interest you earn, effectively, that's but what it is, forget, out of your super account. Those people who might have accumulated that sort of money have worked hard, studied hard, worked long, saved money, Many might have gone through some hardship to do it, and, and they have built up a nest egg and planned over many years to save on that. Now the government's You're saying, taking this very personally, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> now the government's saying, oh, we don't like those people, they're not going to vote for us, we'll steal their money and we'll hose, and has, has, we'll hose has, it at people that might Julia be Has Julia Gillard and Wayne Swan lost your vote over this? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, my position has made, <laughs> stayed fairly strong all the way through. Osman, you must feel absolutely dirty having to sit next to this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I'm used to it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is what it's like in the student union. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right, yeah, okay, full, all right. full of guys like you. Yeah, oh, yeah. What are you studying? Um, environmental engineering and arts. Yeah, so a real degree. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> or the arts degree, you mean? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to make it, you a popular man going back into class after that little... Dis, you know, dislocation between your engineering and your uh, and your arts degree. Yeah, it's, it's dislocating. A big hello to there. everyone. What, yeah, what, yeah, what yeah, are you yeah, majoring in in your arts? Mates, I'm sorry. Yeah. What are you majoring in in your arts? Uh, politics and international relations at UNSW. Yep. yep. Yeah. So going back to the Wayne Swan situation, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you think that when the government taxes more, it's classified as a, should be classified as a saving by the government? So this is an interesting debate that was happening, you know, online and in the papers all throughout today. Is clawing back concessions actually? Um, a saving. A saving, or is it just taking money that people are entitled to earn? Because individualism, you know, the government shouldn't steal people's yeah. money. I think um, if you support a flat tax, you know, throughout all the systems of how taxation can work, whether it's income or on super, then you probably like the way the super system is currently structured. But the vast bulk of Australians, even the Liberal Party, supports some kind of progressive yeah, but taxation. Either way, scheme. it's not. A, I just but don't like the terminology saving. It's yeah. not a, a saving is finding difficult cuts. Uh, a tax increase is. 
a tax increase. Like, a, and, and I don't it's mind not Orwellian, if, if, if they've got a, a philosophical view that you should tax more. And quite frankly, I've got more sympathy than I thought I would have for where they ended up on mm. the superannuation position to where I thought they were going to go with it. Um, you know, that's true. But it's still, it's a tax increase. It's not a save. What? How can you describe finding a tax increase as a save? Saves are difficult. You've got to go and work out where to cut. Mm. If all you're doing is popping up the tax, it's pretty easy to find a save. Put another bracket on income tax. It's, it's just Orwellian newspeak. That's yeah, well, I think where I agree with both of you in this is I don't think that they approach this at all with any kind of political now. So I think <laughs> in, in one hand you think, well, Surely the vast bulk of Australians, at least the people still left considering whether or not they're going to vote for the Labor Party, wouldn't be too opposed to an argument about let's take the, a small group of the most wealthy Australians, take a little bit more money away from them to plug the gaps in the budget, right? But that's not how the debate was framed. The debate wasn't, it was framed when Martin, um, Martin Ferguson, Simon Crane, Joel Fitzgibbon all came out, started the debate before the government had even announced what they were thinking about. Everyone got spooked. The super industry saw an opportunity to come in, fearmonger a little bit more. And what we ended up with wasn't really anything that we were concerned about in the first place. Well, you place. know it wasn't bold but reform when the super industry came out and praised what they did. Because but, at the end yeah. of the day, they were, they were expecting something far worse, and yeah. so therefore it's, they were satisfied. It's not even reform from the outset. I mean, we, we throw this term around all the time. It's just policy change. It's not actually reform. It hasn't actually made What's the difference? Better. Sorry? Well, I, I think reform, reform actually... Reform is when it's policy change that you ideologically support. No, 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 that, that actually advances <laughs> the interests of the country, which actually improves things. I don't think... Doing but they would argue that that does that. They would argue that that does that. You're, you're putting a wholly annoying. subjective definition oh, absolutely. on what subjective, constitutes reform. But I think it's being far too loosely used. Everything now is reform. Well, that's just rubbish. By the way, guys, we've, we've, the we've, we've upset soccer fans. Um, we had <laughs> an, the, the one guy that watches soccer, he emailed us uh, and he said, if soccer is such a terrible game, why are your bosses paying millions of dollars uh, to, uh, to get the rights to it? a terrible game. Oh, it's a I terrible game in this country. Did yeah. you know, no, no, there's a trend game. being... That's outrageous. Oh, soccer is so <laughs> boring. Like, you watch the whole <laughs> thing, the world game. and at the end of it, it's nil all. Who cares? Yeah. I just they lost an hour of my life. Yeah. They need more steroids. In they it. do. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I'm on the same page as that. <laughs> AFL is the game yeah. of choice. I mean, that's fun. Yeah, you know, strange. lots of goals, getting scored. Yeah. You even get a point when you miss. It's the a great game. Look good. Their necks aren't wider than their heads. Like well, I don't watch it for that reason, but I appreciate the feedback. All right, back, I mean, to, uh, back, back to what... Back to politics. Back, back, back to, to superannuation. Back to, uh, but, sorry, I'm just sorry Tim, you take on. Uh, no, that's all right. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, <laughs> But the problem with thing is you, the way you wanted to frame it then, firstly, was this class warfare divide and conquer mentality about rich people versus not. The problem with a lot of what the government has done is that $2 million when you accumulate over your lifetime in superannuation, particularly if you're aspirational, is not a lot of money for a lot of people. It sounds like a lot of money if you just had two million we've bucks We've got to keep around. that for your, uh, for your election reel if you ever go into politics. <laughs> what a you sound like a real man of the people. No, no. It's a, if, two million dollars is not a lot of money. Well, it's like saying a million dollars is a lot of money for a house. Simple reality is it isn't anymore. Once upon a time it was. Correct. Two million dollars, if you have been saving your entire lifetime, is not a lot of money to have sure, at sure the end the of it. that less than half of 1% of Australians are in that situation. No, no, but that's no, what we were saying before. About. That's because super hasn't been compulsory for very long. People are people are saving up more over their lifetime, and it will. And of course, with index, with the absence probably of indexation and things, uh, people will easily hit that. Because yeah, superannuation, compulsory superannuation, only came in in the nineties, didn't it? No, no, ninety-five, eighty. We did some research. It was apparently yeah, at a very low rate. Yeah. But then the top up came yeah. in the nineties, and so a lot of the people that are retiring now have only had a very Correct. fractional yeah. amount of so super the rest of them have for got half their working life, not all of it. So the rest of, uh, the rest of the people have got plenty of time to factor in that 15%. We're talking 15%. It is a very low tax margin. But, but can, is it just me or is it... It's just you. I mean, the more is it just me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what I'm going to say. Is it, is it just me or... I mean, admittedly, they're, they're limiting this to the, the overall pool of people. Yes, it's 0.4 now. It will grow, but it still won't be a majority in sure. 40 years' time in all likelihood. And they are indexing the 100 yeah. grand, is my understanding as yeah. well. Right. So let's be fair on that. Um, but at the end of the day, when they do this uh, and, they, and they bring this in, you can hardly claim to be Kenya Osman, you can hardly claim to be the party of superannuation when you're ticking it up from 9 to 12% at the same time you, that you're introducing a tax of 15% over here. So if people do tick up their super courtesy of the 9 to 12% and get to this 2 million mark that we're talking about, that only gives you roughly $100,000 a year, mm. by the way. Like, we're not talking about them earning enough so that they earn millions a year. That's the nest egg that gives them the 100 grand. They're now Correct. getting a 15% tax where previously they got no tax. So a big thank you for taking me from 9 to 12%. Who yeah. cares? Well, not so, but you're assuming, like, that's a big... No, well, the question wasn't for you, too. I know, yeah, but, you know, I think, I think there's a bigger question there about what, what is the purpose of superannuation. You know, Labor is happy to claim the mantle of being the party of superannuation. I think there are really strong arguments that it is a good system of ensuring savings for future uh, for 
generations of Australians into the future. Because they're not saving anything because then they're paying it back in taxes. But I think, you know, there's been a Walkley award-winning piece done by the ABC a couple of years ago that demonstrated that super, the way that it was being used by the super industry, by different sorts of firms, actually meant that the savings that Australians had on average were declining versus just if you had that in the bank generating interest. But that's partly because of tax incentives, people putting money in super because they see this tax advantage. Yeah, exactly. So and the, you know, super industry, the uncertainty the in the super, super industry has a the huge moment. incentive in growing the pool, not to benefit Australians, but so they have more money to play around with. What the study demonstrated was over the past 10 years, the more money they had to play around with, partly because of the GFC, but partly also because of huge fees involved, the overall pool of super for individual Australians had declined. As, but, as a proportion but we know to that, that's because it's exposed to equities. But the, the, uh, well, the point is, that's, people a pro- actually, that's a problem if the point of superannuation is to provide Australians with a guaranteed income but, once they're retired. I want to get this bloke back on the panel. But this is pre- stuff this is social media. Yeah. 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 But the, he doesn't just have to sit here and rely on talking. No, no, he says pres- what he thinks. The precise point of, of what happens is people, because of the uncertainty around super and because of changed taxes, People move their money from other places and invest it elsewhere and don't contribute more to the superannuation system and maintain a higher degree of control. But that's another... People, people who, were, who, who invested, in, invested their super Before in you actually say this, Toby, I, I, you, you'd gone so silent. It's like you were sitting there sulking about your lost generated <laughs> earnings <laughs> as a result of the policy. He, he said before he might have to sell his golf course and what? I swear he wasn't... <laughs> Did he really? <laughs> he opens one. <laughs> people who invested their superannuation in equities... Um, suffered during the GFC. The people who didn't are those people on indexed pensions. Wayne Swan, Julia Gillard. Wayne Swan's going to get $168,000 after after this, and that will go up steadily, dis- no matter what whether shares collapse or not, his, it, that'll be indexed to inflation. Same with Julia Giddard, 180,000 or thereabouts. Don't you think treasurers' uh, uh, pensions should surely be tied to the uh, budget projections that they actually introduced? To actually, at least in just, yeah, exactly yeah. performance-based income. Everybody in the, wants it for the private sector. Why don't we have it for treasurers yeah. as well? So they. What know, do you think? Well, I, I think politicians' pay and their super should be much more closely linked to what average Australians. I don't agree with that at all. I, I think yeah. that politicians need that kind of level of super, given the, the uncertainty of what they go in to do, yeah. uh, and the fact that you don't want them to be thinking about their post political career while they're there, worrying about what how, kind how well of is money that they're going to have. Like looking at the transition from politicians on both sides of politics going into financial services, um, Lindsay do, Tanner yeah, working do, for do Lazard. You think, yeah, but they're, do, they're, do you think, earning, but you could rule, you could put rules around yeah. what they can do after yeah. if they've got some sort of index but at the moment, scheme My now. understanding is that if you're if they're on the old scheme, they're earning over 100 grand a year in super, and then they work for a private company and earn a private income, Correct. that's on top of their super. Yeah. So I think that is something that could be looked at. Yeah. All right. We're going to take a commercial break. Osmond, it's been great having you on with us. For our New Zealand viewers, sadly, you're going to have to go watch New Zealand news. I'm sure it's wonderful, but you're going to miss out on the rest of the contrarians. It's only our Aussie viewers that stay with us when we come back. See you shortly. The election year is now underway, and for both sides of politics, that means every day counts. As the tempo lifts, Sky News is also boosting its coverage. PM Agenda is now two hours live from Parliament House. That's more time to cut the spin and explore the issues and arguments shaping your election. Two-hour edition of PM Agenda, a cornerstone of our biggest ever election coverage, helping you make the most of your voice and your vote. Australia's election channel, Sky News. Welcome back. You're watching Contrarians. Tim Wilson does not shut up during the ad breaks. I tell you what, if you think he's bad on the show, you know, imagine actually knowing him away from the cameras. Um, we're joined now by Tim Cargill on the far end of the panel. Welcome to the show. Thanks very much. We are going to do news firstly, but just before we do, you're not all bad. It says here that you enjoy reading the Australian newspaper, so that's, that's a it. good news story in and of itself. But you are studying law, unfortunately, so we'll talk a bit more about that as well. You're a conservative, correct? Definitely. And you, don't, you like small government, it says? Definitely. So you don't like Tony Abbott's uh, paid parental leave scheme, presumably? Not much. Disgrace? Abbott's well, a disgrace for that? that? No, I wouldn't go that far, but it is a fixed expenditure. But it's a disgrace. Well, yeah, right. All right. <laughs> we're going to take, we're, we're take a look at what's making news with Lee Hatcher as we just end one political career before it's even started. <laughs> Thanks for that, Lee. Now, let's continue. Let's start with the interrogation of you, Tim. Now, so you're a social conservative and you believe in small government. So small government everywhere except in the bedroom. Oh, just everywhere. Everywhere small government, but 
I don't think that we should be so quick to... In what way in the bedroom do you mean... Well, like if you're socially conservative, mm -hmm. presumably you don't like... Um, well, Tim, why don't you ask the question? <laughs> well, well, there were the plenty of things, you know, <laughs> from, from uh, drugs to uh, what uh, people obviously in the bedroom, so homosexuality, uh, abortion, blah, blah, blah. Is that where you're against the government? Well, I'm, I'm not against all homosexuality. Like, I don't think we should illegalise homosexuality at all. But I think that in terms of traditional marriage, I'm definitely supportive of traditional marriage. Oh, dear, we're not going to get on. <laughs> <laughs> traditional <laughs> well, marriage. Hey, 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 hey. So you mean by government legislating for marriage? So big government you legislating You have to have some government marriage. legislation around social conventions. Of course, you can't. Why? Tim's just Lots nervous that you're going to rise through the Liberal Party <laughs> as, as, as a true modern socially conservative Liberal and lefty Liberals like this bloke over here are going to be pushed to the, to the fringe. Not many people not call me a lefty Liberal. Yeah, but but, but, <laughs> but what, why do you have to have laws around social conventions? There's actually no logic behind that whatsoever. So you think that there should be no law around marriage whatsoever? There well, there be... is a legitimate b a debating point on that. You can mm. actually say it's just a contract. Let people set up their own contracts and force it through contracts. Can you law. can you timeline it so that you can set up like a five year contract? So you only have to be married to someone for five years. We well, have an expiration date if you want it, I guess. Technically. So why not? I dare you to but, but the, the point isn't about what you would do with specifically with marriage contracts. Why does you said social conventions should have laws around? Them. In fact, most social conventions don't have laws around. Yeah. That's why they're social conventions. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I guess in terms of um, I'm saying sex marriage, I just think that. Like, so often debates phrase in terms of equality, right? Like, we have yeah. to have marriage equality. But in Australia, um, for the most part, the homosexuals, sorry, same-sex people have all the same rights in terms of um, child maintenance and property division. Um, we are not like America. So, so yeah, yeah, we, yeah, I was so about we, to we, say, we, in America, it's you, different because they don't have... So you support it in America, but not here? No, I support equality in terms of property rights. Okay, so, so they get equality in everything except the right to marry? Well, the right to marry, it depends on what you, how you, inter what you define marriage as. I would define marriage as between a man and a woman. And I understand that's my perspective, and other people have different perspectives. And, but and in, in a democracy, I think that, you know, I, I, if, if we had a plebiscite on the issue of gay marriage and the people said yes, I would be completely fine with that. So do you think that we should have a plebiscite? I think we do, because I think, I think we definitely should. I mean, I understand that it's expensive and there's cost. But I think I just... An election will be fine. So we found another thing that you <laughs> despise Tony Abbott's stance no, on. No, no. Because he doesn't want to do that he, either. He does. I think that he, I agree with the party position for now. But because it reflects his personal, his personal position, right? So it'd be different if... So he, should so he should impose that on the party? No, but as the leader of the party, I think it is his prerogative to um, set the direction of the party, right? Yeah, um, but you can do that by saying having a conscience vote and... You could, and but electorally, saying, electorally that would be unsound. Because but the point is, if he doesn't want to move moves. the party to a conscience vote, then clearly he doesn't support a community plebiscite, particularly given that the polls well, show that a majority that. of people are in favour of it. A majority of people are in favour, but often they don't see it as a high-ranking a high ranking issue in the community. But how is it electorally unsound, though, if most of the people are in favour of it? It's electorally unsound because the happy clappers out there in the bigot belt will vote as a block. People who support it will say, oh, that's good, we've allowed it, and it won't change their vote. Well, people who are against are fiercely anti. But that, that, you know, that, that, that's that's often among, they, among like... Um, among Christians and Catholics and other people of that persuasion, they support Tony Abbott. And if he, um, if he was to uh, reverse his position, I think that that would generate a lot of angst. So you among think it's, it's kind of like in terms of his legitimacy, like the carbon tax. If he didn't repeal that, definitely, if he definitely. didn't stand this, people would question his definitely. judgment. Definitely. And I was going to say that in terms, of, in terms of a plebiscite, I think that that would be the perfect way to solve the issue. Because what will happen, like recently we had a debate, I think it was in September, Sorry, a debate. It was, the bill was debated in Parliament. I think it was September and November last year and it was defeated in the House of Reps. <coughs> um, yeah, because Abbott wouldn't allow a conscience. Because he wouldn't yeah. allow a conscience. No, it would have gone down even it would, have, it would have gone down anyway, but I think Probably. that... Probably. It would have. You, have, you have... People perceive it as special interest groups pushing their agenda on Parliament and saying things like it's the aspiration of the nation for this to go through. But I think if people were actually given a plebiscite upon it, like I 100% believe that the people should be able to decide Okay, so issues. you're socially conservative, but you're, you're cool with gay marriage if the people want it. What else are you conservative <laughs> yeah. about? Well, in terms of... No, I'm conservative in the sense of my personal views, but I don't necessarily want to impose them on other because people. Because you believe in small government. Tony Abbott yeah. doing it. Well, no, but he's not imposing his views. That's already the law. He's simply maintaining it. you said, it. as leader of the party, he's got the right to do for that. For his party. And people, people know that is his, his position. So therefore, when they vote for the party, they vote on, based on that understanding. So it's not like he's just... And, you know, if, if you really want to look at the issue, Julie Gillard is the one who... If she, if she actually made it party platform... Um, sorry, if she, if she didn't make it a conscience vote, if she made it party position, sorry, I meant to say, then it would probably go through. 
But if, okay, if but Julia Gillard did that, mm -hmm. Don Farrell in South Australia would withdraw his political Correct. sponsorship of her mm -hmm. and she'd lose her job. That's, I'm sure, why she came well, out against Well, there's it. every chance that the Labor Party would break up, actually, if, if yeah. there was an attempt to, to change the party's platform that substantially on this, yeah. as opposed mm -hmm. to just allowing a conscience vote. Correct. We're getting yeah. past gay marriage. What, what about drugs, then? I mean, that's... In terms of should we keep them but illegal? But should they be legal or not? I don't think they should be legal. Of course legal. he's not going to say they what should be legal. He's a social conservative. No, 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 at least, no, no, at least ask borderline questions no, 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 rather no, 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 than no, no, do you want heroin no, no. sold on every street corner? <laughs> no, no, no. Because still, you still say you believe in small government. Do you believe it to the point where we should have certain drugs legal or which ones and how mm, should William well, Washington, roughly. recently I think they legalised, um, I don't remember the exact drug, but small dosages of uh, an illicit substance in Australia, if it's marijuana or cocaine, I'm not quite sure. Well, lots of states in the US have medical marijuana. Yeah, I, I'm not I'm So not what's your sure. point? You don't need to, you don't need no, to no, make no, it legal because you I, can get it anyway. No, no, Is that no, your I, point think, I think that that's... I think that when you start... Okay, when you start uh, legalising things, you create a social Aren't acceptance all things of legal them. until they're made illegal? All right, now no, you're going on, down hang the hang path on, of, hang on. That's the theoretical. Of, they're already illegal, right? Yeah. So I think just in, like viewing it in terms of an educational perspective, because obviously I just finished school, but I think that having these things as illegal allows you to construct a strong argument against the health, um, the health impacts of these substances. And I, I do firmly believe that, like I know in the 60s or whatever, and 70s, there was a big talk about recreational drugs, but a lot of the medical research, you, you know this better than I do, you're on a board of a hospital, but a lot of the medical research is that... Who's on a board of a hospital? Oh, I maybe, am. I mean, He's obviously been reading my bio. Or no, 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 you said it once on Contrarians, but whatever. Like, um, it has really bad uh, health impacts well, Mo, on people. You, I've got to interrupt you. Why would a hospital want you on their board? <laughs> Which hospital are you on the board of? But board of Alfred Health. Why do they want you on it? Sorry? Well, no I, offense, obviously. <laughs> no, 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 none taken. I actually bring advice on public affairs. Yeah, right. That's my skill set. Now, go, now go, the question of the day. <laughs> Wayne Swan, yeah. is he a good treasurer or not? No, he's a joke. I mean, what sort of a question is that? It's a, it's a <laughs> no, how, how, a bit of, how about a bit of youthful respect for mm. the Australian course, Deputy sorry, Prime sorry. Minister? If there's one thing World's I loathe... Australia. You're calling him a poor parody of a human being. If there's one thing I loathe, loathe it is that disgrace being mocked for his <laughs> appalling effort as treasurer. Don't you agree, Dan? <laughs> like we have to have respect You're for a our... terrible, terrible man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so do you want a political career? Uh, I'm thinking about it, but I'd want to enter the legal practice first, most definitely. Just like to sort of chalk that up? Well, I don't really want to be reliant on the public sector for my employment. Because you, re you reckon we need more lawyers becoming politicians? Oh, I think a uh, parliament can always benefit from that for sure, yeah. So what kind of law do you want to do? I'm not sure yet. I really like constitutional law. And yeah, I think I'll just see. I've only just begun my degree, so we'll see. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Any more questions, Tim? You were no, taking no, over. No, I was just saying, <laughs> it's a very John Howard-esque route, which has become a... Uh, he was a lawyer first, but anyway. Well, it's good to uh, choose to follow him, yeah. No, you, you were about to attack Howard for his lawyering. He didn't just no, no, use no. his lawyering to become a politician. I wasn't being critical of He was of a his, partner in a firm. I was not being critical of John yeah, Howard and his legal The percentage of our MPs are lawyers, I'd say it's pretty high. It's actually it? gone down a lot, you know. Like, it used to be much, much higher. Teachers. I, have, I haven't done it. I used to do studies on pre-parliamentary backgrounds. Um, but my understanding is it's dropped away. I mean, in WA, for example, uh, the last Liberal... Well, when the Liberals got into power over there, when Colin Barnett was first elected, uh, he only had one lawyer in his ranks that could actually be the Attorney-General, and that was Christian Porter. Uh, and, that, and that was why he was the shadow Attorney-General before they got into power, because there was no other lawyers in the ranks. Uh, and there's been evidence of that elsewhere, that it has... It's gone down compared to where it used to be, say, 10 years ago. That's probably a good thing, a sort of a broader selection of people in Parliament. There's a real career endorsement for you, too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, you, well, they should come from marketing, should they? <laughs> <laughs> Where they can no, really not have a, substance galore idea. to go with, uh, <laughs> with their views on some of them. Selling messages is not a bad thing. Now, Tim, you came in here with a bunch of talking notes. Are That's they from it. the Liberal Party? No, no. Oh, they're from the Australian. I just sort of read the paper before. Oh, so they're morning. your own notes? Oh. Yeah, yeah, they're my own notes. Dean Madigan, someone that does their own <laughs> notes before they come on contrary. Someone's not raising three children and holding down a career. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> is, so you're, you're too busy to take on anything else? Pretty much at the moment, yeah. Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right, before we take a break, though, I just want to check your, your views on a couple of other things. We've, we've had a bit of a mock attack at, uh, at Wayne Swan. What about the GST with mm. Tony Abbott, who you've already, here on Contrarians, Tim has slammed Tony Abbott <laughs> for his position on paid parental leave. 
Um, he'll be gone by the time you get in. Don't worry about that. Um, but quite seriously, what about his position on telling mm. one thing to one state and another thing to another state yeah. on the GST? Well, Pretty it's, duplicitous, isn't it's it? A, it's a tricky issue. Like, obviously, we have... He's tricky on this issue, you think? No, no, no. Just wait. Right, just wait. Right. We, we have a big vertical fiscal imbalance in, in the country, which goes back to, like, the 40s, 50s. And... You could make the argument, which many have, smarter than me, that the federation is broken and could do with serious uh, modification. But yeah, I but think... Yeah, don't, don't bog us down in this kind of detail. The <laughs> bottom line is, he goes to WA and he tells me he wants to fix their GST share. He then goes to Tasmania or he, no, South I, Australia and says he's going to no protect their GST I know, but I think, I think You he can't will, do both. I think he will definitely look at it in government. But you know what So he's like, lying to... You're telling what no, you're saying no, is he's no, lying no, to no, Tasmania say, and South what, Australia. What he said, I think, was that no, no one would be worse off but, but that's not possible. If you're going to fix it for one, there's a limited pool, then you're going to destroy it for the others. Uh, yeah, well, there's, this isn't... I'm putting facts in the story. Yeah, yeah. When you, when, you, when, you look at, when you look at taxation, though, you have to, as Julie Gillard's proved, you have to be very careful with what you rule in or out. And on the issue like GST and uh, I think the states... Well, it's not even just about the GST. Like, in terms of projects being delivered by the government, Gonski, NDIS, the... Um, the ambit or the scope of government beyond what was designed in the Constitution is, is, is so much larger than it used to be. And I was just going to point out that, um, you, you know, even when Julie Gillard came to Western Sydney, she was talking about crime and transport, which are traditionally and should be state, state areas. responsibilities. Because I don't understand why a federal government, which is all the way over in Canberra, should have responsibility for implementing things which affect people within their own states. Uh, Tim, 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 he's already proven that he's interested in politics on your side of the house. And he's he's actually spoken as long as you yeah. can take Without answering segments. a question, you we should go into no, politics. No, no, no. <laughs> All right, we're out of time. We're out of time. We've got to go to a commercial break. No more interrogation from Tim Wilson. The other Tim. Tim, thanks for your company. No worries, thanks, thanks for joining so us. Cheers. Stay with us. We're going to take... Don't walk off set. We're still on air. I haven't even thrown to the commercial break yet. We're going to take a commercial break. When we come back, we'll take a look at some of the emails that have been coming through. You're watching Contrarians.